Hello there, it's your boy Offy D, and I am here with Imperator Rome. Now, I am by no means a Paradox Games expert, nor even a Paradox Games player. I'm just an ill man who happened to get a free copy of this game, courtesy of a hookup through Kings and Generals. So, I figured since I'm in between projects right now and have some time, I try to make a couple of episodes of an abridged campaign for this game. That means we're only going to be covering the most interesting and relevant parts of the campaign, so we'll move at a nice quick pace to get through the few hours I spent playing the game, and we'll follow the drama of Dobunia. This is the tribe that I'm going to be playing as. There are like 50 bajillion different factions you can play as, and you have to pick one somehow, so I picked the one that's roughly where I live in real life. I think that's as good a reason as any. You might note there are a load of recommended factions you can play as listed at the bottom there, but I figured that that's probably too much work, and other people will have done those already, so let's have something a bit more unique for this abridged campaign experience. Now, even if you don't really know how this game works, it should be quite easy to follow along, because after all, I played the game without knowing how it works, and I will give a few pointers to explain what I'm doing. For example, all those numbers at the top are just different kinds of currencies that we'll be spending on various things. Now, as for our strategic situation, we start surrounded by factions, so we are going to want to defeat one of them right away in order to gain a local advantage here in Britannia. There are some other things we need to do before we unpause the game at the start, and I'm just going through these notifications to try and satisfy the game's uh, prods at me to go and do things. One thing it wants me to do is invest in a technology. We spend our wreath currency on this. These are just passive buffs, basically, and I don't think any of them are particularly important. Not that I know, but I think I ended up getting all of them, actually, within the first few hours. They were quite easy to acquire. As for what we're going to do, I'm looking south towards the Dorset area, Duro Trigger or something it was called, because I thought if we conquer that, we'll have the coast protecting a flank there, so our kingdom will look a little bit better. Now, in order to conquer someone, you just need to have an excuse to steal all their stuff, and to get an excuse, you spend your scrolls currency by clicking the Get Excuse button. It's really as simple as that. There's nothing <laughs> material to it. We just say that we have an excuse, excuse to conquer at least part of their territory. And the Casus Belli system is quite liberal in that if you have the right to conquer any of their territory, then you're allowed to take all of it, and that's still okay. So we'll just plow in and have the lot. Before we go, though, we want to make sure we have more troops than they do so we can ensure victory. So we'll quickly build some units and hope the AI doesn't. <laughs> that way we'll have an advantage. Here's another thing we can do to satisfy the notifications. We can spend our son's currency on an omen. This is a religious idea. It's again a passive buff, but it only lasts for a certain amount of time and then you invest in a different one. So it's a tiny bit different to the technologies menu. As for which one to get, well, I wasn't really sure, but I figured this one would be good because it reduces your aggressive expansion penalty. This is something we'll be hitting pretty soon. Basically, when you start taking territory, everyone hates you because they notice you're trying to take over the world. So if we reduce our aggressive expansion penalty, they'll start liking us quicker again after we've captured some lands. As for diplomacy, you can see in that list that nobody likes us right now, but quite a lot of people just have no opinion on us at all. Now, there are all sorts of micromanagey things you can do to do with the economy. You can see me here puzzling over some of them. The game was complaining that I had bad research rate because I didn't have enough citizens, and you have the opportunity to spend some of your scrolls to turn your freedmen into citizens. And you can do this in all of your little regions, and we started with so many regions that this was an overwhelming task, even at our smallest border extent, so I'm not really going to be doing it. We're going to do the old, just hope it's okay, off -E -D strategy. Not really sure what it means to be a citizen. This game is very much uh, based around the idea that you play as Rome, basically, even the UI. And, of course, the title suggests that you're supposed to be playing as Rome. So playing as a tribe, you still have to use Roman nomenclature. And, of course, all our places are named in Latin, for example. So I guess it's some rough analogue to becoming part of the nobility or something. Now, here's a quick look at our government screen. There are a few important things to note here. In particular, in the bottom left, our clan chiefs. The way our military is organized is that we have three ruling families in the tribe, and those families are somewhat independent. So while we're playing as one of them at any given time, the other two will have their own armies that they raise themselves, and I think they pay for them themselves as well, at least partially. 
but because they're sort of independent they won't necessarily follow your orders and they might want to overthrow you and become the ruling family at any time. So we'll watch out for that. In practical terms that means we can't put troops into our existing armies because they kind of belong to someone else. The entity that we're playing as, the state, doesn't quite control those armies. So they can walk around and we'll create a state army from the new units that we recruited. So I guess this is the army of our own ruling clan. Donwen there is our faction leader, but I won't make her be the leader of the army in case she dies. I'll go for the next best choice, who's still pretty good by the looks of things at military stuff. You might note, by the way, that our faction is pretty matriarchal. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be, or if this is just a coincidence, but our men really suck, and a lot of the leading politicians and the candidates for offices are all women. Maybe it's actually meant to be like that. I don't think it's said anywhere we were specifically matriarchal. Not sure. Don't think it makes any difference in the game. Let's get on with taking some territory then. One thing that will help us out with this is picking up a couple of random alliances. Since allies might join your wars, we can get some other tribes to go and invade our neighbours on our behalf. So a couple of these other random tribes offered alliances and I took them. I struggle to remember these tribes' names or recognise their banners or anything and that's going to be an ongoing issue, but it doesn't really matter for our purposes here. I declared war with a couple of allies, they had an ally of their own, and the war starts. So we're now at war with the green faction and the purple faction to their east, and a few factions from the north will come down to help us. All we want to do then is cross the border and go and stand in their territory to start occupying it. It has the paradox war system, so to win you just have to appear to be winning psychologically and get the enemy to surrender. It's less like a total war where you need to more materially capture everything and the enemy have unbreakable spirits. Managed to lose our first battle right there because the enemy are in my territory. We just kind of swapped places as the war started. They were capturing my stuff while I was capturing their stuff and they took out some of my reinforcements in a flash. I think the main problem is I haven't remembered yet that you can reduce the rate at which time passes, so everything's still happening too fast for anyone to really understand. Now, even though we lost our first battle, we do get a peace offer from the enemy, and they're willing to surrender actually quite a lot of their territory. I didn't really appreciate this at the time, because I didn't really know what those words meant, still being unfamiliar with what the factions were called. So I just declined the offer on principle, so I thought we've only just started this war. I feel like we're going to win, so I might as well take a piece offer later when they'll probably be offering me something better. And indeed, we defeat one of their armies right away. Nearby, our allies are taking down the enemy, and things are just generally looking good, so now we just have to go stand in enemy territory some more and start capturing stuff. While that happens, the game's throwing at me one of its many dilemmas here, the two other clan chiefs, the two other potential faction leaders, are arguing over who owns some land near good old Aquasulis, and I have to side with one of them or I can side with neither and they'll both dislike me. So the game's basically forcing me to take sides and making one of the leaders be ostracised so that they'll eventually come and kill me and stuff. Nice and annoying. I think there's no uh, easy way to stop the other clan leaders from hating you, as we'll look into a bit more later on. Now, to our east, I notice my allies are fighting some pretty big battles. The purple faction actually has a gigantic army, and it's bigger than our army, and our allies are getting absolutely toasted out there. Well, better them than me, I'll just sit here completing the war objective and we can still win this way. But it was a bit worrying, knowing that the enemy could come and sweep me away if they really wanted to. So I'm going to start putting some more units out there and improve the size of our army, just in case that happens. We've got another of these little events here, and this one's not very important, I probably wouldn't have bothered showing you it if it didn't make me realise this. Our faction leader, our Queen Donwen, is extremely unpopular. On the 0 to 100 scale, she's at like 3, so I'm not sure how she became Queen. Everybody hates her in our faction, apparently. But we do get the opportunity to make her a bit more popular there by just roasting that guy and refusing to be his friend. Now everyone thinks we're a bit more cool. So that's good, isn't it? Anyway, the war continues with me largely not doing anything and just watching my allies getting absolutely annihilated out there on my behalf. Looks like our queen is also lapsed, too busy roasting people to go worship the spirits and such, but fine. My forces strategically move away from the enemy army to keep upping our war score by occupying the territory we're going for. 
and this all works out pretty well because after a while we get another peace deal. Now this peace deal is pretty hard to understand again because just look at this huge secret sequence of words. I at this point in the game admittedly didn't know what the name of my faction even was so this is where I kind of analyzed things and realized that what this peace treaty is actually telling me is that they'll give me all of their territory. I didn't quite understand that that's what it meant. But they are suggesting that I take everything. I thought maybe they were suggesting I just take two little bits. And I was like, no, but they are suggesting everything. So I eventually accept the deal and bang, all of that green faction is annexed into our territory. And we're no longer at war with the purple faction. So that big army isn't our concern. The perfect result. Now, since we're absorbing the elites of another faction, we have to decide what we're going to do with them. You've got various options here. One of them includes reducing our aggressive expansion score, which you can see has now increased at the top here. It's currently at 7. Obviously, I didn't really know what 7 meant. <laughs> this has no context. But I later realised that that's a kind of bad number. It makes everyone hate you quite a lot. You get like minus 30 to your relations with the other tribes nearby, which is a decent penalty. So getting that down would be good. But in this case, I also wanted to get Donwen's popularity up because she's such a loser of a queen. And by killing all, all of the elites, everyone's just really happy with that. So I'm kind of gambling on the fact that having a popular queen might make our nation more stable, but I think in the mechanics that might not be how it works at all. And maybe popularity doesn't work because the tooltip mentions it's more to do with getting elected in a republic situation. Here you can see I'm setting up a trade route with someone. There is this very micromanagey trade system that I won't really be showing here in the game, but I did do a little bit of that. I'm also trying to disband my armies because I want to save some money. But interestingly, you do have to spend money to disband them, so you kind of have to give them a golden parachute as you get them fired. That's an interesting mechanic, I thought. You don't really usually see it done like that. Anyway, so I'm able to disband some of my forces, and now we can make some money. We want to just stand around now because I want to invade off to the west and take the yellow faction, the Noni. And to do that, we need to collect enough scrolls, come up with enough potential excuses, basically, to steal their stuff. And that's going to take time, so we will just settle down. While we were waiting, I sent our clan armies, the ones belonging to the clan leaders that we can't disband or anything, to go participate in a war that was going on just to do something. There's some war that I'm involved in because of my alliances. But I had no idea what was going on, didn't recognise the name, didn't know what banners were what, and generally just had no idea which guys were even the enemies in that war. Then I got this message which distracted me even further. Someone in India wanted to tell me about the drama going on over there. Apparently the emissaries made it to our tribe. Thanks for the update. But yes, this war was going on. I think it's between a couple of the Welsh tribes maybe, not quite sure. But my troops got in there and didn't participate in any battles or anything. <laughs> they just sat around. And I think they occupied some territory or helped to occupy territory. And the war just kind of ended. One of the criticisms I've always had of Paradox Games that appears to still be the case in this one is that stuff like major events will happen without you being told about it. So there I got a message saying, I need to leave this territory. But what it didn't tell me was, we've won the war. Maybe we lost the war. I don't even know. Not the sort of thing it would tell you about, but the war's over, so our men came back. Anyway, back at home, we have our share of issues because the other clan chiefs are getting more and more uppity, and that's becoming more and more of an issue. You can see on the right here, we've got some disloyal character issues, and it's caused by this loyal cohorts penalty they get to their loyalty. Basically, because they have some troops, it makes them feel uppity, and I don't think we have any way to get rid of their troops. So they're constantly becoming more and more disloyal at quite a, a quick rate as well. Every couple of years, they're going to rebel against us, basically. So you need to adjust your nation's policy to try and improve general loyalty. In this case, I'm not sure if we have a way to do it, and if we do, I don't know what it is, but we'll look into it later on. There are things we can do. For now, though, the Civil War is not going to be avoidable. So what we have to do is prepare. It's handy that it tells you when it's going to happen, so we can wait until 
roughly just before the civil war is going to break out and then try to win around the less disloyal chief because if the state and one chief are on the loyalist side then the one rebel chief will be outnumbered so that's the plan so i go to talk to Boudica here always a bad name when you're trying to not get someone to rebel and we can do this exalt thing we're going to stand Boudica hard so that she feels more loyal to the nation as a whole the polity our state while this makes the other guy even more disloyal because he's jealous he's about to start a civil war anyway so i figured well that doesn't matter we'll try and keep the loyalty from one character so that we can outnumber the enemy with my one and only preparation done we just have to wait for the time to run out and the civil war to start and there it is civil war but it does not go as i had hoped because Boudica also joined the rebel guy so they're both teaming up against quote unquote me whatever i represent as the player and we're in trouble we're going to be severely outnumbered they've taken most of our territory so we're now the minority they certainly have an advantage against us at first i thought well i'll just let them win because maybe the game will let me play as them instead i'll play as the new dub nunny but i'm not sure that's how it works let me know if it does work like that in this case i thought no i better try and actually defeat them just in case you get game over if the civil war wins so what are we going to do well, we can call in all of our old allies to fight for our side in the Civil War, so I'm starting to do that here. At the same time, the fighting has broken out and I'm not paying any attention because I'm just trying to find more people to join our side in the war. The good news is that only the more rebellious guy is fighting me. Boudicca's gone off to occupy some territory down by the coast, so the battle we ended up with isn't that hard. And uh, both sides are very committed to this fight. Once I finally get done with the diplomacy here, we'll take a look. But basically, everybody ran out of morale. We're slowly killing each other. Neither side really wants to be doing this, but they're just going at it. You can see this uh, visual representation of what's supposed to be going on in the fight. It's a little bit less of an abstraction than in the previous Paradox games, but I still have no idea what this actually means. Anyway, while the fight just kind of drags on, it eventually goes the enemy's way, because you can see just to the left there, the rest of their men are showing up to participate. Now they've got tons of morale, tons of troops, and it is declared a defeat for us. So that is a bad start to our civil war. We really need our allies to show up and uh, win this one for us, be more meat shields for us again. I had to replace quite a few of the tribal officers, not sure what you call this, it's called the government, <laughs> whatever the tribe's group of leaders is, have to replace all the people who do the stuff within our bureaucracy, because half of them have gone over to the rebels, and while I was there I noted that actually we've got some new clan chiefs in town, I think you always have to have three, so two more guys just appear, we've got two more ruling families, one of the guys doesn't have an army and that makes him loyal the other guy does have an army so he's rapidly becoming disloyal once again so we're already preparing for the next civil war during this one this guy really has a no sense of timing anyway at least it means we get some free troops because he spawns with a few thousand men plus i recruited a couple more units and was able to get quite a few guys together actually since our allies are pouring in as well and a battle then breaks out Part of the rebel force is still in the south, so we're able to have an advantage here. But the enemy's troop numbers did jump up a little bit there, and I wasn't quite sure why at this point. It was possible for me to know why, and perhaps you watching know why they suddenly had more troops than it looked like they should have as that battle started. But we'll get back to that in a second. The point is, we won this battle and pushed those rebels back. So with that, our big army can start moving south to recapture some of our lost territory things start looking quite bad for the rebels in fact their armies are either wandering around with no morale or are fighting with my allies in other territory and that's okay because if they just want to sit over there and generally not participate in the civil war that's fine i'll take back the lands that side with them and then we'll just have an economic advantage and can take them down that way and taking back the lands is pretty easy because most of it doesn't have forts you either have somewhere that has no fort and could be taken easily or has a fort and can be taken with extreme difficulty but most of the places we can just walk over some guy up there is insulting me for some reason not really sure why you can also see there are other wars going on all over the place i was just ignoring them but i actually shouldn't have been ignoring them because some of them 
I am a stakeholder in. We'll get back again to that in a second. We had some good news politically. It seems that uh, some leading minds from the rebel side want to uh, sneak over and join our loyalist side again. So we're going to do that. We're going to drain the enemy of their best and brightest. And yes, things are just looking good. We're starting to paint the map back into our colour blue, the far superior one. And it looked like the rebellion was about to just be technically over because we had all of their land. But actually, something else is going on. And my first clue to that is the war score. I was confused. It says minus one. We're technically losing the war. And I thought, but we're taking all of their territory back. Shouldn't this be giving us positive war score? The uh, problem is that there's actually another faction involved in the war. It did say it there, but I literally didn't notice. And I'm just looking around the map going, what's going on? What's the problem here? Not even seeing the fact that there are two armies taking my territory right next to where I was focusing on. Incredible tunnel vision. And here, I'm starting to get suspicious. I was like, wait, who are those guys taking my lands? Oh, another faction is in league with the rebels it's the guys over in wales we're actually fighting them and we have been fighting them for a long time i just didn't even notice and that was the source of the rebels mysterious reinforcements and now just as i realize we're at war with them their army is piling in against my army and a decisive battle is breaking out i discovered really at the last possible moment before i'd be forced to discover what was going on there so uh, while this is to some extent my fault i will just say paradox have something appear when someone declares war on you just pop it up i could have discovered the moment it started someone should tell me as the leader right <laughs> anyway so a battle breaks out our troops are in there some rebel troops are in there the rebels allies are in there and our allies are in there and the battle just escalates and gets bigger and bigger as more and more people pile in the battles are very slow and very bloody in Paradox games in general, and in particular right here. So both sides are just killing each other day after day as the weeks go by, gradually reducing the size of both armies. And it tends to be the case that even if you're winning or you eventually win the battle, you still lose tons of troops. The battles are very bloody. There's not a huge amount of advantage to winning other than it gives you war score. So eventually, we do win this battle, but we lost pretty much the exact amount of troops that they did. That was just a slaughter, a Pyrrhic victory for us. What it means overall is that this civil war, which I thought was about to come to a close, has really only just started. We are barely winning. It's arguable that we're winning at all, and others seem to be involved in it. So... Why don't you join me next time to see whether and how this can be resolved?